Hey all, today we're going to start our discussion of circles for the year and we're going to start uh, with some basics, um, some names of segments that can exist inside circles and also about arcs and central angles. So first of all, some segments that uh, exist in relation to circles. The first one is a chord. A chord is any segment inside the circle that touches the circle twice. Uh, you already know the name of a special chord, and that's the diameter. The diameter is a chord um, because it touches the circle twice, and it's inside the circle. And it's a special chord because it goes through the center. Uh, we've already talked about the radius. The radius is any, any segment that starts at the center and touches the circle once. Uh, a tangent line or a tangent segment is any segment that touches a circle once and then never touches it again. So this segment touches that circle in that one point, that tangent point, and then it'll never touch the circle again. You can see that as it goes that way or that way, it would never touch the circle again. And a secant segment is a segment that sort of slices through a circle and touches it twice. And in fact, part of a secant segment is a chord, but that segment also exists outside of the circle like this one does. So it starts from the outside, goes through the circle, hits it twice, and then goes back outside. So let's name some segments. Uh, let's first look for segment IO. Segment IO starts at I and goes to O. It starts outside the circle, cuts through the circle, and hits it twice, and then goes back out. So that is a secant segment. Let's look at HM. HM starts at the center and touches the circle. So that segment is a radius. LN. It's outside the circle. Touches the circle at point M and then stays outside the circle, so that touches the circle once. It's a tangent. JP starts at J, ends at P. It stays inside the circle the whole time. It touches the circle twice, and so that would be a chord. And last, AK touches the circle once touches it twice, stays inside, and it goes through the center, and so that is a diameter. So just a quick discussion of these types of segments that can intersect or interact with circles. An important part of a circle that we've already kind of talked about uh, when referring to construction are arcs. Arcs are just parts of the entire circle. So I have these arcs highlighted in red here. Um, the first one is a minor arc, arc BC or arc CB. You can name it either way. A minor arc is less than 180 degrees of a circle. And we name a minor arc just by using two letters, the point where it starts and the point where it ends. And we put a little arc symbol on top. A semicircle is half of a circle, so an entire circle is 360 degrees. So that means a semicircle is 180 degrees. It's half the circle. Uh, we use the points that start and end that arc, but we also have to uh, use one more letter. So we call it BCD, and that tells us that we're talking about the semicircle on this half of the circle. If we just called it arc BD, we might be confused and think we we're talking about this side, which we're not. We're talking about this right side. And the last type of arc we can talk about is a major arc. So a major arc is larger than 180, and it's also less than 360, because 360 is the whole circle. So to name a major arc, we're also going to need, need three letters. The letter that we start with, B. Then we want a letter on the arc that tells us which direction to go. So when I say BC, that means to go towards C. 
and then the end point of that arc D. So that tells us we're talking about arc B, C, D. You kind of follow the letters around and it traces the arc that we're referring to. So let's name some arcs for angles. So I want to name the major arc for angle one. So that means I want an arc that's bigger than 180 degrees. Angle one is formed by these two radii. There's angle one. And arc UV would be the minor arc associated with angle one. But I want to know the major arc. So uh, I'm going to start at U, go towards Y, and then I'm going to go all the way around to V. So I'm going to name that arc U, Y, V. Starts at U, goes towards Y, ends at V. It's possible to have named this U, X, V, or U, W, V, or to even go in the other direction, V, W, U, V, X, U, V, Y, U, as long as um, you're describing where it starts, which way to go, and where it ends. So look at this one, angle one, so it, not the major arc this time, just the minor arc, angle one is made by those two segments, and it refers to this angle, so I'm looking at this arc right here, Starts at E, ends at D. You can name it either arc ED or arc DE. Both of them will work. And last, the major arc for AQB. So AQB is the angle that starts at A, goes towards Q, stops at B. So we're talking about this angle. We want the major arc, so the arc that uh, is greater than 180 degrees, so that would be this one. So that arc starts at A, goes towards C, and ends at B. So I'm going to call that arc A, C, B. We can also name the angle associated with an arc. So here I have arc A, C, B. That's at the start at A. Go towards C, so I'm going to go this way and end at B. So that's this arc. And the angle associated with that is angle 1. GF. GF is a minor arc. Starts at G, ends at F. That's also angle 1. And then IKJ starts at I, goes towards K and ends at J. So it's a little confusing. I could go this way towards K, but I have to look at the whole name and see that I need to end at J. So the only way to start at I and end at J by passing K would be to go this way. That's a major arc for angle number two. So what we've been looking at in um, those six examples are what we call central angles. Those are angles that are formed by two radii. Their vertex is at the center of the circle. So that side of angle one is a radius. That side of angle one is a radius. And uh, we would say that this arc FE or EF is intercepted by that angle. It's created by that angle. So that would be the minor arc, and then as we've seen in uh, some of those examples, that this would be the major arc formed by that angle. And so there's a really important relationship that exists between this angle and that arc. And that is that they are the same measure. So if I know how uh, many degrees angle 1 is, then I'll know how many degrees this arc is. If I were to spin around all the way around here, uh, angle 1 and whatever this angle is, we'll call it angle 2, they would add to 360, just the same as this arc in green and this arc in purple would add to 360. So these angles that are formed at the center of a circle, central angles, 
they're going to be equal to the arcs that they intercept. So let's take a look at some examples. I want to find the measure of question mark, so this angle. That's located at the center of the circle. It's made by those two sides, and it intercepts this arc that's 47 degrees. And so therefore, that angle is also 47 degrees. Let's look at YTU. So angle YTU is right there. And uh, this one's a little bit more difficult. It intercepts this arc. And so uh, this angle is 72, and it's vertical from this one. So this one's also 72. My green arc and my purple arc together make a semicircle, 180 degrees. And so if I subtract 180 minus 72, I'm going to get this angle that's 108. And last, URW. This arc right here is formed by these two angles, 62 and 48. So we just got to add those two together, and it'll tell us that the arc is... 110 degrees. And then, of course, we could go the opposite way. If we have the arc, then we should be able to find the angle. So this arc, question mark, is made by this angle. That's 69 degrees. And so, therefore, question mark is 69 degrees. Here, JGI, arc JGI is right there. It's formed by this angle, but it's the major arc. So uh, arc IJ is going to be 67. <laughs> and so the green arc, JGI, is going to be 360 minus 67, which is 293. And then UW is right here, formed by that angle. So I just add these two together, and I get 120 degrees. So I do have a few questions I want you to do. Make sure you watch this till the end and uh, answer those questions.